USB, USB, USB. All right, let's, uh, hey everybody, I'm Travis Lausch, and uh, this is my YouTube channel. And uh, because I'm going to be doing something with notes reviews coming up in the future, um, I thought this would be a really good opportunity to sort of reintroduce myself in a manner of speaking to uh, YouTube in a way, because I had a YouTube channel, Low Shows Reviews and Vlogs, and if I'm going to be honest, my heart wasn't really in it. I, I felt like I didn't really want to do something that required me to have like a regular schedule and a regular style of content. I'm not a YouTuber. I'm just some dude who happens to have a decent microphone, a webcam, and OBS. And every time I look at my screen to look at what I'm doing, I, I look like I'm not looking at you guys. So uh, this is going to be a kind of quick, dirty video of basically a me reintroducing myself. Hey, yeah, woo! And also, uh, well, you can see on the screen we've got some spicy-looking uh, music theory nonsense going on. And uh, it is because of... This meme, which I found on Notes Review's own Discord, and I thought it would be a fun little exercise to uh, see if I can create this chord in Guitar Pro and see what it sounds like. Uh, both of them, in fact, because uh, we have a flat 13 version and a sharp 13 version. So, we're going to have a little music theory today. This is going to be fun. Okay. So let's go back to MS Paint, where I have very crudely um, come up with the chords. This is actually for both chords. As you can see, I've got both the add or the flat 13 and the sharp 13 in the chord. Um, so this is going to be uh, a bit interesting. So, uh, to go back to this, so the chord is called the C major, or no, a C minor, major nine, add six, add 11, flat 13, augmented 11 over E. I am actually not too sure about that augmented 11, um, because Keska, Keska, fuck, but, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna treat those two 11s like they're the same note, because, I mean, how do you add an 11 and then augment an 11, unless you're just adding, uh, another note in between, and I, I think for the purposes of guitar playing, um, if you're if you're adding too many chromatic notes in between one another, uh, it becomes impossible to play because unless you're tuning your guitar to some sort of special uh, pitch, you're probably not going to be adding uh, too many chromatic notes all together in one chord. So, yeah, we're gonna go back to this now. So add eleven. I guess augmented eleven. Would an augmented eleven be a a sharp on the add 11, like, uh, the add 11 here is an F. Would that be an F sharp? I don't know. So, of course, you have your root note, which is the C. Simple enough, you know, it's a C chord. Very simple. And then it's a minor, major 9. So you're going to have both your minor, which is your E flat, but you're also going to have your major 9, which is D. Um... I don't know why they really call it a major nine here, because, I mean, I've I've always... I'm a guitar player, so I've always referred to this as a suspended second. But a ninth would be... Uh, when you think of, like, your intervals in the major scale, like, say we're working from C. D is the second from C. C is the root, or the first. Then your third is E. Then your fourth is F. Your fifth is G, and so on. And when you get... To C again, you, you go back to the octave and start the process over again, then D is your second. But 
in jazz and other forms of music, obviously, if you're going to extend your chords in such a way where you're covering different tonalities through different octaves, you might refer to a second as a major nine. And I mean, I'm I'm no music theorist. I I have a high school level uh, of music education and a little bit of reading on my own outside of that. But I'm not like I'm not Adam Neely level trained. Uh, but yeah, when you talk about like extending a chord, uh, oftentimes you're not talking about notes that you've already covered in the lower octave. Like it. If you play like a C major triad in two different octaves, uh, it's still just a regular C major chord. You'll still refer to the E as the third in whatever octave you're doing, but now you're playing like notes that aren't represented in other octaves. So you're going to use a, an extension. In fact, um, if you go beyond like a 13th, uh, I guess uh, the 14th would be B, although I don't know why you'd call it a 14th. Like you you almost never encounter that. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> so yeah, so you have your minor and your major ninth, which is the D an octave higher than your second. Well, you don't really have a 10th chord. You still just call it a perfect f uh, or a major third, but then you would have your add 11, which is. Uh, which is F in this case, so it's basically your perfect fourth above. And then your flat 13 is G sharp. Then the chord also has an added 6, which is A in this instance. Just regular A, no flats, no sharps. And the whole chord is played over an E bass note. And that's where we're going to try to use Guitar Pro. So I'm going to come up with a new file. Don't mind my uh, crappy um, naming schemes for all of my... Now, we're going to have to do a little bit of tweaking here because our low bass note is an E and I'm using an eight string guitar for this because frankly, um, there's seven notes in the chord and the lowest note is an E. So I kind of want to represent this. And of course it is Toast and Abasi from Animals as Leaders in the meme. So uh, I want to represent this on the kind of guitar he would play. So an eight string electric guitar in what we call drop E tuning, where we take that lowest string, which is an F sharp, and tune it down to E. So we're gonna, I'm gonna keep the clean strat sound because I, I, I really wanna emphasize how ugly these chords are probably gonna sound, so. And we're gonna have to go into the track and mess with the tuning. So here we go. And to do that, yeah, you just, you just go into the tuning sidebar and click on that and it brings up this menu and my low is now a low E. So obviously we start our chord with a low E. I'm going to do it as a whole note. Beautiful. Uh, actually, no, we'll, we'll start the chord We'll start the chord from the beginning of the chord name. So a C. Pretty straightforward. Um, of course, I'm going to have to refer back to the meme many times before I. Uh... OK, so here we go. C minor major nine. So minor and major nine. I think we're going to have to actually alter the tuning even more. Let's actually tune this whole guitar down a full step. So now our C is on the third fret because we need to be able to finger that minor. Anyway, 
minor third. So so far so good, you know. Uh, pretty dark sounding but constant chords. So we need to get that. Uh, we need to get that uh, major ninth in there. So our major ninth, as evidenced in <laughs> stupid chord dot j uh, png, is a D, which in our tuning is the second fret uh, yeah second fret on the fourth string so that's um that's actually a pretty uh contortionisty sounding chord we're getting into like true ambient gent territory here uh yeah so I'm I'm not really gonna pay much mind to whether this chord can actually be fingered yet. <laughs> uh, let's go from there. So our chord name, add six. So we're gonna add an A. So that would be the fourth fret. We're still in that very ambient. Uh, contortionist territory here and I mean this chord isn't impossible to finger yet but it is um, it is getting to be a bit of a tongue twister so all right so the next element of our chord is the add 11 which uh, as I'm pretty sure is the F that was added to it above the major nine. So the problem with that is it's going to be a little tricky to actually add that F because it's between. Oh, let's see. Okay. I can actually use the open string there and F is the open string. How convenient. Everything's coming up, Millhouse. So. Now we're, we're getting into the territory of chords that are sounding a little more sus. Okay. This is getting fun. So that's our... That's our add 11. Now our flat 13, we might have to do this in a different octave. And, you know, a 13 doubled on itself doesn't necessarily mean it's a 24th chord. Uh, but... So that's a G flat. Hi. This is our crappy cell phone video to tell you that from here on in, the rest of this video is pretty much bupkis because I confuse my G and A on the piano. So uh, I'm doing this as now, like, I guess a not flat 13 anymore. Don't hurt me. But yeah, I from here on in, the 13th part of the chord is completely wrong. So sorry i was hoping this wouldn't happen but reviewing the video i messed up <laughs> which we can't necessarily do in between these three notes here because i mean we'd have to add an extra string and tune it somewhere but a g flat in this tuning uh second fret would be e because we're we're a whole step down so e f g isn't that beautiful and then the ps de resistance we put it over an 
a bass note of E. Beautiful. Brings a tear to your eye, doesn't it? This chord is actually pretty easy to finger. It's, uh, I mean, maybe not easy, but it's possible. In, in, on an eight string tuned down a whole step, that chord is actually easy. Now there's a sharp 13 version of this. And you would just simply switch that high note for a uh, note two frets higher. So, wow, yeah. So when your bandmate accidentally plays a... Instead of a... And you notice it. Well, that was fun. Um, what a ridiculous chord. Well, that was a lot of fun to do. I'm a Glad I got to do this, and again, welcome to my channel again. For those who are, you know, just discovering this because of notes reviews, uh, little live stream thing that we're doing soon. Um, I mean, by the time you're watching this video, it'll already have passed, but uh, don't take my channel too seriously. It's full of crap and shorts, and it's... and. Prior to, like, two years ago, it was mostly just cover songs, and I, I'm too lazy to go back and, like, hide them. But, uh, yeah, I want I just wanted to do this because it was hilarious, and I thought, oh, challenge accepted. And now I have won the challenge. So anyway, thank you for watching.